Oh my, it's Kelly White. Hey, it's James Grant Pog. What are you up to? Thinking about changing the world. Me too. We should do a show together. What would it be about? Let me show you. Yay, Wee! Hi, James. Hi, Kelly. How are you doing? I'm good, honey. How are you doing? I'm good. I, I like us both in this like cream color. <laughs> you know, yeah. since we're going to be talking about mantras today, it's kind of you know brings me back to visiting gurus. Same, same. I, I once visited a guru in West Hollywood years and years ago when it was during the AIDS crisis. And I remember I was working for APLA. I helped, I helped to form APLA. And, and uh, there was a lady there named Guru Ma. There was maybe a couple, but this, this Guru Ma was from Brooklyn. Did you know her? I knew Very different, a different Ma. Ma. <laughs> but she was such a Brooklynite, New Yorker. And it shows how interesting it is because I it just can't, I, the guru thing for me is not my thing, but yeah. whatever. So um, they said, have you been, I walked to this house in West Hollywood and everyone's full with, in the hallways are full of people. Have it, has mom named you yet? Has she named you? Said, no, my mom named me James. No. <laughs> no, That's no, hysterical. no, 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 no so. Anyway, so yeah, after a while, we sat down in the living room, I guess, and she was, they had a chair for her and higher than us. And I was in the very first row. And um, she came in. She was this Brooklyn Jewish lady I grew up with. What? So, um, and they wanted her to meet me, and I'm sitting there with everybody else. And um, I, I was I was upset that we were lower than she was. We surely the same level. Yeah. So she said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Well, I'm a medium." She goes, "Oh, I'm a large." <laughs> I said, I've heard that before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wanted something to happen. I said, "Okay." And she was just kind of making not fun, but made jokes about mediumship. And she goes, so I said, "Okay, that's enough. I'm leaving. Bye bye. <laughs> you should sit down here with the rest of them." And they left the room. Yeah, ah! I, I had a similar experience. Did you? I had a similar experience with that. Yes, uh, this one I was was, was from India, but it's kind of similar situation. Yeah. But what I did learn is it was how to meditate. It really taught me really some good practice of meditation. So that was that was worth oh, worth the price of admission. Exactly, exactly. exactly <laughs> and it right. seemed like it was a big price at the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can have to talk about mantras. Which first you want to talk about astrology, though, which is going. Yes. It's an intense energy. A oh. lot of people have heard of leaving quick, like and fast passing. By the way, well, so, what about Bob Dole? Yes, that was he fast. passed, Very and I. I really felt that it would have taken an eclipse to for him to move to exit. You know, um, this has been a this is continues to be a powerful time because now that the eclipse, both eclipses have passed, we're going to feel the energy for six months. But this month of, of December, we're really going to feel it. And right now, some people might feel anxious or depressed because there's a like a void when there's an eclipse. After an eclipse, there's a void period. And the void is where you're letting go and releasing and welcoming in the new. And, and it's like a void. And if you can get comfortable with this void period, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. It's actually this void is needed to create space. And this space is what we're going to use going forward in 2022. So allow yourself that time for this great void. Now, it's, change. It, it's changes that is going to occur. And I think change is good. Don't you, James? I think change is necessary. That's all the constant change. Absolutely. I, I also think if we can, um, I'm seeing my comments and everything. Um, I, I would love it. You know me. I would love this change for people to think of other people and not love themselves. It. And and start thinking about others, like even tonight, other people. Yeah. You know, it's all about others. It's, it's you know, we're in this we're in this boat together, all of us. And um, we have right. to think of one another. It's interesting. I just came from PetSmart buying my doggy treats. And it was very interesting what was going on because um, I don't know, just lady cut in front and the whole thing. And it's like, oh, and of course I'm thinking, no offense to anybody, but the cat lady, very different than dog people. <laughs> so I said, she looks at me and said, and I and she didn't say anything. I said to her, oh, it's okay. You can go in front of me. I'll let you do that. That's okay with me. You're more, it's more important. That's okay. <laughs> I don't think you understand. But that's all right. I've heard you do that before. <laughs> that's, that's pretty. He was asleep, I think. You know, walking. Right. Well, 
you know, you and I are going to do a show at the in, um, in a couple, two or three weeks before the end of the year about 2022. And we have the a great theme, that's right. It's and the away. theme for 22, 2022 is going to be exactly about what you said. It's thinking of others, taking care of others, making that kind of transition in the world to raise everybody's it's consciousness. It's it's oneness. One. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're yeah. right on, right on target with what is going to be happening. One person's pain is everyone's pain, and we have to help each other out. And absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So currently, we're in a really interesting place right now because we have a couple of big things happening. Okay. Um, the first is we are in the shadow phase of Venus going retrograde in Capricorn for 40 days. 40 days is very significant. Normally, Venus, when it goes retrograde, you know, might be 10 or 12 days, but 40 is an awful lot. So, and it's in Capricorn. So it's going to be reevaluating our values in relationships. But the well, most important. Really, let's just stay there because that's a lot, okay. Kelly. Mm-hmm. We have to that one. So, Venus in Capricorn retrograde. So, mm-hmm. in, in relationships, could that be uh, kind of a, like I say, reevaluation of people's relationships, but also slowing down or a, a time to assess? So, assess. Don't expect correct- your partner just just be and just see what you do together time to come together and assess it yeah and i'm going to talk about some of the things to look out for and then some of the really good aspects of this so right now we have we will have three unusual times with this venus retrograde it's venus is going to conjunct pluto venus conjunct pluto means you'll look in the sky and you will see pluto right next to venus Now, Venus is the planet of love and relationships, and Pluto is destruction, it's death, it's transformation. It's going to change the way we have had relationships. Kelly, is Pluto the hidden planet? It's the hidden planet, so maybe you won't see this coming. That's why I need to talk about it. There might be relationships that are going bye-bye, and it's hidden. Absolutely. And the big ticket days of this are December 11th, December 18th, and the big one is December 25th, Christmas. (laughs) Sorry. Okay with me. (laughs) Oh, my God. So relationships are going to be tested during this period. I'm already divorced. It's okay. You don't make me laugh. It's going to, you'll be looking at your family values perhaps differently or um, traditions perhaps differently. But I will tell you what it's really. After one second, ask you this. Um, Venus in retrograde in Capricorn, could that possibility be also at during that time you'll meet someone karmically that you need to meet? Absolutely. This could bring karma. And the other, but one good thing about this, there's a couple of really good aspects here. It's a great time if you are constantly choosing in a relationship your trauma bond, if you're constantly choosing the person that, you know, you have trauma, they have trauma, and you've both not worked on your trauma, this is a great time to break that habit. That is a bad habit. I used to think, James, that, you know, two negatives made a positive. So if two people had traumas, then together they would work that out. That's really not the case. You have to do your own work. It gets worse. It opens up that trauma wound. So this is a time to break trauma bonds. Okay. So this I is a good thing. You know, my, my good friend, Debbie Ford, who passed over, he's called the shadow side. Yes. And everybody has their shadow side. Oh, and please, shadow everybody. Side. And now with this Pluto conjunction with Venus, it, the shadow side of people is going to come out. That's come a, out. The shadow will be there and it'll yes. affect your love lives. Definitely. And particularly during the shadow time that we're in right now. So, yeah, good point on that. Absolutely. And so, surprises, Kelly, right? With relationships. Oh, real surprises in love relationships. Real surprises. And one of the things you guys have got to watch out, this brings up in people that haven't done the work on themselves, manipulation or guilt tripping. You don't want to do that in a love relationship. You want to let people be, you know? Um, Interesting enough, James, do you know, I have two famous people that were born with Venus conjunct Pluto. One is Liberace. Was he pretty explosive in relationships? Yes, he was. And isn't that interesting? And the other one was, is um, the famous artist Frida Kahlo. Oh, Frida. Yes. Mexican mm-hmm. lady. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful artist. Beautiful. I don't know much about her personal life, but I, and I know this is. Um, I think it was, there was a lot to it. <laughs> yes, there was. 
I think right. there was a lot to it. So, there. Wow. And then for long-term couples that are in healthy relationships, this is a great time to make all kinds of plans. This is a great time with Capricorn and also James, Pluto's in Capricorn. So imagine that kind of Plutonian Capricorn Saturn energy. And a good time for them to um, read their wedding vows or partners or their assessment with each other and partnerships with each other or it's, look the future together also. Yeah, possibly. probably not until about February 1st okay. because the, uh, this Mercury or this Venus retrograde goes until January 29th, I think. What an assessment, Kelly. Huh? Assessment. assessment of it. And then yeah. once it goes direct, really make those vows again. Yeah. Go do your work. This is a great time to do your inner work. So somebody says, Frida and that man she married, woo, talk about toxic. Yes. <laughs> so what does yeah. that mean if you are a Capricorn? If you're a Capricorn, you're probably going to be doing a lot of work on yourself, a lot of reassessment on yourself in terms of relationships and in terms of the shadow side of yourself. And Capricorn is also karmic. It's a karmic lesson. It's a major totally karmic. Totally karmic. Saturn, yeah. A lot of these relationships that we're in, most of them are karmic. So you'll yeah. be seeing a lot of bumps or ups and, yeah. you know, a lot of learning. A lot of, a lot lot of, of learning. learning. Don't judge it. A lot right. of learning. You know, exactly. Not, it's just, it is what it is, and that's all that it is, right? Yeah. Exactly. So there you go. We'll talk more Thanks. next week about Thanks. things. Well, it's really great to hear your You're astrology. You're welcome. Three <laughs> years now, Stick Kelly. God, every time I love talking to you, Kelly, I feel like it's <laughs> Sorry. Go somewhere else. You're welcome. <laughs> We're going to be doing a new opening for the show. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm coming down with, um, you know, it's funny, Astrology Way Awareness Avenue. So I love it. <laughs> Awareness, <laughs> Avenue. Awareness Avenue. Astrology Way. Yeah. Perfect. Kelly and I are going to be in a car driving because we've done that before. And it's an oh, interesting place. Kelly's a great driver. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> not really. So that'll be, um, We'll, we'll portray our trip. We We're always we late wherever well. we get to. Yeah. <laughs> we have a good time, though. We have a great time. <laughs> so tonight we have an interesting show. Is it all there is about astrology? That's what we should That's it at. for right now. That's, That's plenty. Enough. That's plenty. Um, so then we we'll talk about mantras. And our, our producer, Renee, um, really knows a lot more than I do about mantras. Mm -hmm. Kelly, you know a little bit about mantras. A little bit because I worked with a guru, but Renee is the Renee expert. Is the expert. So we're going to invite Renee in to tell everybody about mantras. Well, welcome. And Renee. we should tell tell everybody about Renee's background. Yes. <laughs> yes. His background. Go right ahead, Kelly. Well, Renee works with Deepak Chopra. For how many for years now? Over 10, 15 years, Deepak? Yeah, 12, 13 years now, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And, and tell us your background, Renee. Originally from Holland. We know you're a doctor. Yes, I was. Um, um, I moved in 2008 to the United States. And before that, I was. Um, I lived in the Netherlands and I lived in Belgium. And I was a podiatrist. Yeah. So I have a totally different career when I moved to the U.S. I became. And excuse uh, me, you're a Pisces. Rules of feet. I Sorry. I am. Yeah. So true. I am. Yes, my birthday is March 11th, Pisces, correct. Yeah, so I made a huge, um, um, you know, like like many of us do in our in our lifetime, right? You just, you know, something doesn't feel quite right. And, and um, for me, it was like, you know, the doctor's path, it, it was not fulfilling um, anymore. And I was missing something. So, and I didn't know what it was until I went to um, one of Deepak Chopra's events. And my mother actually sent me and I didn't even want to go. <laughs> I was like, it's spiritual stuff. Come on, you know. <laughs> but you know, the thing is that when once I um, I dove into it and I and I, I, I opened my heart right to the teachings, um, I'm like, oh my gosh, there is so much value here. How is it possible that I've never seen this? And it opened my myself up completely. And then as um, as synchronicity has it, um, you know, I met my my wife at the Chopra Center, oh, wow. and then, yeah. and, um, and then when we um, when I moved to the United States, I actually um, um, helped out as a volunteer in the beginning for the Chopra events, the live events, and then um, yeah, interestingly enough, the the the, the, the person who did all the audio visual at the time, he um, fell in love at one of our events with a lady from Spain, and he was like, I'm out. And then the Chopra Center had no audiovisual guy. And so they asked me and said, do you, can you do this? I'm like, uh, I don't know. But I learned something about, you know, embracing uncertainty, 
you know, step into the field of infinite possibilities and be open. So all these these terms that I was very unfamiliar with, but then um, at that time I, I learned a lot about it. And I'm like, all right, I'll step into this field of infinite possibilities. And I jumped in head first and I learned real quick. And um, yeah, and I've been doing uh, all his life events uh, ever since. And it's been an incredible blessing. Uh, of course, with COVID, I had to change my careers a little bit because um, you know the life events weren't there. So I moved into hosting online events and, and, and stream yards and that's when I had the blessing and the good fortune to meet the two of you and now I'm doing a lot of background work for the two of you and hosting your yeah, show. We met, so, we met the Chopra Center many many years ago when you were still the AV guy there right wow. yeah and now I, I live know. about two blocks from where we met the living in Encinitas so funny. Yes we, 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 we've been neighbors pretty, pretty much neighbors for, for many years yeah that's so cool so cool. Yeah, but coming back to the topic of the mantras, of course, because I did the teacher trainings at the Chopra Center and I visited also many other teachers. And um, at the Chopra Center, we, we had Chopra uh, offers a mantra based meditation. Yes. And um, I was like, whoa, what in the world is a mantra? Right. So and that's the topic of today. And um, um, what it really means is mantra. You can split that up in two different uh, part man is from manas is from the old sanskrit term manas means mind and tra means tool or vehicle oh, wow. so it's a mind vehicle or a mind tool Interesting. and it's great as many of our listeners um and, and and viewers probably know because i know that a lot among you who are watching youtube um, meditate, have a meditation practice. So a lot of you probably know what a mantra uh, does and how it works. But, you know, I think it's helpful maybe to also discuss today, like, how does that work? How do you use it? And uh, what can you use it for? Right? Uh -huh. So, yeah, I can elaborate a little bit more if you want about... Um, if you're just curious about a, a mantra, and, and a mantra can be any phrase, if you will, or any sound, right, that you can, that really resonates within you. And it can take you into, a, I guess you'd say, a journey or deeper spaces of concentration, right? And just focusing you, focusing, would you yeah. say, would be it? So the breath and the mantra, repeating that mantra over and over again kind of brings you into another kind of space, I guess, an altered state of consciousness sometimes, certain space. Yeah. We go there in all different ways, but a mantra, I found when I was first beginning, um, my mantra was a visual mantra, and my vision was a rose, and the rose would open up every time I'd sit in a circle. I'd visualize that rose opening up and saying, first, so that was my mantra. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And Deepak, when I was with Deepak back in the center, they gave me, or he gave me, or someone there gave me my own personal mantra. Mm -hmm. and how did that work, Renee? How does that work? Yeah. That's what I did for years there. I've been teaching meditation for years at the center, and I gave people mantras. I gave hundreds and hundreds of mantras to people. And how did you get to their mantra? How did you know which was their mantra? Well, the Chopra Center's uh, mantra is called the Primordial Sound Mantra. It's a very specific mantra. And again, uh, you have thousands and thousands of mantra, and all of them are good. Right? It's not one is better than the other. It's just that the lineage where Deepak comes from is from the Vedic tradition. And um, he, uh, he met with his teacher, his guru in India, and he did a lot of research about like, how can I bring the meditation to the West and use a simple tool for people to help with, you know, with their anxiety, with their stress, with all the depression, with uh, you know, PTSD with um, you know, all these things. How can I help and, uh, in an easy way? And he, um, he said, well, use, well, he learned to use the primordial sound meditation. And that is actually based on your birthday and the location of your birth, where you were born. And why wow. is that? That's because when you trace that back, you know, as we know, and as the two of you always talk about, the universe is energy, right? It is an, it's, it's always, it's an ever-changing energy field. It's a vibration. So the moment you came into existence, into this world, there was a certain vibration and certain energy, a certain primordial sound. Now, 
there is a, a, a calculation uh, attached to this and there is um, a formula attached to this, but what the, in the Vedic tradition, what they did, and this goes back thousands of years ago, is they calculated the sound that the universe was making at the moment you were born, is it, that is a given. And now, and that becomes your mantra, your primordial sound mantra. It's pretty cool because basically when you start your um, meditation process, well, first of all, the reason why we use a mantra is because, you know, as, as many of you know, the viewers, you know, probably too, that when you start to meditate and you start to sit like this and like, okay, I'm going to meditate. Now you sit here and then you wait and you say like, uh, I want a cup of coffee. Yeah. The monkey oh, mind. The groceries. Yeah. The you monkey. know, and you're like, how long have I, have I been meditating? So you have all these questions and all these thoughts come up, these random thoughts, they come out of nowhere. Yeah. We're all aware of that, right? It drives us sometimes crazy too, because it's too much. And if you have a lot of negative thoughts, a lot of negative, and which is, um, you know, understandable because the world, as you both always say, it's not an easy place to live in. So, but is the tendency is to have more negative thoughts than positive thoughts, we can slowly move into depression. We can slowly move into anxiety. And now a lot of people who um, are very caught up with all that, they can reach out to places like, you know, like you, James, like you, Kelly, like, what can I do? I'm depressed and, sure. and also the children's center and many other places. And then you know, the mantra, um, it comes in very handy right there because when you go into your meditation practice and you have, of course, this train of thought, it's, it's unstoppable, nor do you have to try to stop it. That's impossible. Mm -hmm. What you do is you introduce this mantra. Why? Because then your mind has something to land on. So you do at the end a short meditation, a Soham meditation. And um, and that's so. Um, okay. Let me interrupt you if I could. Excuse me. I, I I know a lot of these people are watching right now and, and doing this and, and thinking, how can I find my own my own mantra, and and yeah. where would I go to do that? I don't think the trouble mm -hmm. center does that anymore. Are there places that you know of that would do that for people? Yeah, well, the Chopra Center actually does it online. So they have an online version now. Perfect. So, yeah, if you go to Chopra.com, you can do that. And okay. you can, um, you can Everybody that wants Chopra. that, I knew people were asking mm -hmm. that. Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I was given one. I remember I was given one. And it was a big ceremony, too, when it was happening. Yeah, yeah. there's a whole ceremony. <laughs> but that's basically, it. yeah, that's like I walked into Deepak's office with him after a big lecture that time I met you. And there were yeah. hundreds of books he's written. And I said, Deepak, this is where we're reading frame, we're chatting about some stuff. I said, Deepak, do you realize how you've changed? This is how down to earth this man is. You've changed the world. How good at the books of how you've changed the world and opened people up. He said, Would you mind if I go use the bathroom? I said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're very down to earth, very real. Very, 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 very. I see. I see that Stormy, um, she says, I use, I think this is yours, um, James, like healthy am I, happy yes. am I, holy am I, right? Yeah. That's a perfect mm -hmm. Oh, look, there you have it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I have cups and I have it in uh, notepads. And uh, yeah. Like, yeah, all my students get this. And, my I have, and I have this. I got the cup. <laughs> that gave to me years ago. Spirit gave me that. Spirit gave me I that love it. 10 years, 12 years ago. And that's an affirmation. Healthy that's am an I healthy. That's, that's an a, affirmation. And I should point out there's a difference between an affirmation and a mantra. A mantra really goes back to some very sacred roots. Sure. Mm -hmm. And Sanskrit and Vedic. Yeah. yeah. The, mantra the, is really, the mantra is really to help quiet down the thoughts in the mind. Okay. Right? That's what the purpose of the mantra is to just create, you could say, a pattern interrupt. Right. Rather than following these endless train of thought, which we have, which we all have unavoidable. But what you want to do with the meditation is to quiet down these thoughts, to slow down and to for the mind to land on something. Your mantra can be very helpful because what you do is you silently and effortlessly repeat this mantra over and over and over again. And then when your mind drifts away, which it will to other thoughts, or to sensations, or to feelings, or perceptions. You notice that, that's fine, but what you do is you effortlessly bring your mind back to your mantra. 
And this dance you do over and over again. And eventually it becomes easier for the mind to rest on the mantra. And what then happens is you, you, you have brainwave coherence, your body starts to heal, your heart rate slows down, your immune system boosts, your, you know, oh, but it is all over time. You know, this takes, this takes some, sure. some getting used to in practice. Yeah. You know, Renee, I read that it actually boosts the production of nitrous oxide in the body. Wow. Yeah, it does. It is unbelievable. And also when people want to do some research, yeah, there's yeah. lots of studies now too. I see that Missy says, is this the same as TM? TM is Transcendental Meditation. Mm -hmm. He's a Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Uh, many of you probably know him. He brought um, meditation to the West. He had the Beatles and, you know, all these mm -hmm. famous people, Ram Das, you know, they all were with the TM. Deepa comes from the TM too. Yeah. Um, but this this is a, a little bit different um, than the than the TM meditation. But TM is also a beautiful and, organization. And you're going you're to share with us the end of tonight, you're going to share um, a mantra meditation for everybody here tonight. So Renee's going to do that before we end this evening. So make sure mm -hmm. um, you stay here for that because that'll be pretty incredible. So you'll come back later, Renee, and do that with yeah, us? Yeah, I'll come back later. We'll yeah. Thank Thanks, you, Renee. Renee. Thank you. It's Thanks, so Renee. interesting. Chris you know, Paul, uh, Paul, oh, I'm sorry, Paul Katz, which is a mantra which I, I know very well. And um, Probert worked with that with that when she was teaching with me. And his is Be Still, which is a great mantra. Be still, you know, be still is a great one. You know, the exhalation, the inhalation. We always like inhale like three breaths and exhalation is going to be two beats more. So exhale like five in three. Yeah, five. There you oh, go. Yes. Oh, yes. That's, yes. oh, that's a wonderful one, right. especially for sleep. Yeah. Reporting a short mantra over and over again in the mind usually tires out the monkey mind. And before you know it, you're asleep. Yeah, that's right. That's great. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Affirmations and mantras are very different. They're very different. So if we were doing affirmations, like I would. Yours is one of my favorites, James. Healthy am I, happy am I, holy am I. I love this this one. Um, and also some other affirmations would be for anxiety. If you had anxiety and for an affirmation for that would be, this will pass. This will pass. Or how about this one? It's an old favorite. One day at a time. Yes, good one. And my, my last one for anxiety is I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. And yeah. I, I say that often. I, I, yeah. You know what I use a lot? What do you use? It is what it is. And that's all that it is. Yeah. 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 It's it is true. what it is. That's all that it is. It is. So we, we can make it, it so much more. Now, and humans can do that. Humans tend to make things so much more than they really are. Yeah. And it's they, life is really simple, but the human makes it so complex. You know, we're going to oh. make it so complex. You know, a pen is a pen is a pen. Don't make it more complex than it is. <laughs> Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. <laughs> the other one, my friend, my friend Marianne, uh, is a famous Buddhist one uh, saying, which is, you can't push the river. Oh, I love that one. You can't, you push, can't push the river. Yeah, river. that's a really good one. And for grounding, a lot of people, if you notice, you know, in the work I do, I, a lot of people just are not grounded. And so there's some really good grounding ones too. For instance, I am in my body. Mm, I am in my body. Yeah. I am connected to earth. Or I am the I am part of the earth, yeah. I am part of the earth. I am anchored like the roots of a tree. To to be, you know, to get in your body. And for depression, I will feel good again. I listen to my body for physical symptoms. I am not my thoughts for negative self-talk. So there's some That's good great, ones. Great ones. Great good one. affirmation. Wonderful affirmations out there. And some wonderful mantras, too. I, I hope that I'm looking forward to Renee telling us about OM because that's yes. a um, a big one. Oh, um, yeah, and, and all the mantras and the different chakra points would have different sounds associated with them. So there could be a mantra. Let's say you're sitting for developing your um, clairvoyance. There'd be a certain mm -hmm. sound, a chord, musical chord that would associate itself with that. And then, of course, you have singing bowls with the same with those chakras. Right, uh, right. And, um, uh, what, what do you think about music for, for so, a mantra? I was just. I was just thinking of that before you said that, Kelly. Hmm. So I, I think we have to, uh, Renee might know a lot more than I do, and he does know more than I do about mantras. But for me, it, and I think it's true, when you repeat something over and over again, and, and I love the primordial sound, I love yeah. that. I've never heard that's great. 
um, looks when I got my mind. But I, I like that. I just think that in a way, it's a focus point. So I think whatever can focus you mm-hmm. back, and if it's repeating something over and over again, which is what a mantra is, and it gets you to that part of focus and gets rid of that monkey mind, that's what it's the that's what the goal is really. Um, and I often tell people just go back to your breath. If you find your mind your mind is going crazy, just go back to the breath, go breathing because you have to breathe. Have to breathe. Right. Yeah. Right. The best, you know, it's a great one, Kelly. The uh, another affirmation or a saying: Tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow. Scarlet, right? <laughs> Tomorrow is another day. Is another day. <laughs> right. That's so true. Um, yes. So mantras, I think music, I think music can be mantras, I think, without a doubt. I mean, yeah. I find myself repeating a song in my head over and over again, certain lyrics over right. and over, or I have to play the same song over and over again. And right. it puts me in a certain space, of course, like when I said everything's energy. So it, right. it puts me in a certain space. And right. I, I like that. I, I, I really like that. I, I right. find that when I drive, I love, love to listen to music and sing in the car. And it's, I think it's a good way of stilling myself because of what's going on out there with the yeah. cars and traffic and people and it just centers, they can center us. So it's, it's, yeah. it's centering, grounding us and bringing us into that space. Yeah, I spent 2020 and most of this year listening to my favorite songs because my favorite songs just kept me in an upbeat place and I would just listen to them over and over and over. It was very helpful for me. Missy Jade says, I was hoping to ask the question about music grounding people. I find music so grounding. Yeah, it's very grounding. I my, agree. My, my go-to is Sanatam Kerr. So she's my mantra. Well, that's um, right. Sanatam Kerr is my girl. And yeah. she's a lovely Sikh uh, a singer since so she was three years of age. And uh, wow. all, all of her music to me are mantras. I, I just, right. there are phrases in there and lyrics in there that are very much mantra, mantra, right. if you will. Here's then, a good question. Leanne Ellis Franklin says, is it more powerful to meditate with others or solo? What do you think, James? Well, I, I think it's it's you'll have more energy with people. So that's one thing. There will be more yeah. energy. Um, but also you're you're it's just I would just say it that way. There's more energy to use, if you will, but that brings with it what kind of energy they have around them. So what are their thoughts like? So are they clean? Right. You know, I it, you know, just I would just say I don't know, like so there's more energy, if you will. I know when I'm, I'm meditating or I do a meditation in a conference. It's a wonderful feeling, and I do get more energy, no doubt about it. And I love, I love when people are in a group that have one mind. They grow oh, up. that's yeah. the best. One mind is really yeah. powerful. So I like that aspect of it. So right. it's great to do a group, but if you can't by yourself, it's fine. Renee. Well, this is a very interesting topic that um, the, this question because um, if you, you can find this online, um, um, a study has been done. This was in the nineties, um, I think, in Washington D.C. in the grassy area in front of the Capitol. They um, there were like um, five hundred to a thousand um, meditators. They gathered there and they meditated for like three weeks every day. And what they did is they kept track of the violence. Um, the break-ins, burglary, uh, any sort of any sort of violence in Washington D.C., and believe it or not, exactly during that period, it, the, the statistics of crime, the crime rate was like lower, like forty to sixty percent. Wow. It's un- and that's the power of the collective, wow. power of the collective meditation. Look it up um, um, online; you can find it. Um, group meditation, Washington D.C., and you'll see it's a very very powerful the meditation. You know, my, my thought about, for, I don't know if I told this, but I think that maybe Kelly with you next year, I, I, I think next year's going to be, uh, for me personally, exciting. Some of these great yeah. big things are happening. I agree. But, but my goal and um, is, and with a couple, some friends too, is to bring a oneness, that a oneness awareness, bring that awareness back to people, to everybody. Um, yeah, so I'm creating, um, behind me, you'll see right behind me here, over here, lots of books on my my office. I'm I'm creating a new course for next year, and it's uh, mm-hmm. a couple of courses, but the ones are really important right now. Whenever I do books, whenever I'm writing a book um, or coursework, I really research and develop it and really pull things apart and change things around. So that's what you see behind me. But I'm doing um, a new course next year called The Game of Life and How to Play It, mm-hmm. based on Florence Shin book in 1930. <coughs> And it's going to be it's going to be good it's going to be good to help people with that to get back to that sense that we're all, we all belong together. And your thoughts are right. your thoughts are so powerful, and if people just realize how powerful their thoughts are, I think the world would be a different place. So, and for everybody that grows and changes, it affects other people that grow and change, and other people that grow exponentially. 
exponentially. Like when I had my near-death experience, I remember when I had that yeah. sense of, I had everybody has a ribbon above their head, like some kind of a ribbon. I was so aware of it. And that in the ribbon are the thoughts that you have, whether they're good thoughts, it can be pastel colors or portrayed. And then there's a big tapestry, like a matrix. And I remember that my thoughts go into that tapestry affecting every single person, every single person. So I could be careful of how I affect every single person. And what am I going to put into that tapestry, that matrix? Because I'm responsible for it. Right, right. Even and the those- higher in consciousness that you become, the more aware you need to become too. Completely. It's a constant. It's not like you get there, oh, and then you're there. It doesn't work that way. It's easy oh. to get fall off. We're all human here. You can't go back. Once you get there, you can't go back. As you said, I love right. those shapes. You can't go backwards, right? Can't go backwards. You know nope. what you know? You can't unknow something. So Sue Lopeman says, can a mantra interfere with messages from the other side? I would say no. The mantra, really, the idea of the mantra is to get you to a space where you can receive messages from the other side or have more clarity within yourself. So it shouldn't get in the way. Just It's really for your benefit to get there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree with that, James. Um, yeah. There are a lot of uh, statements here. Um, Michelle says that Anita Monjari, the writer, spoke of that ribbon tapestry and how we're all connected and how it affects how we affect one another. So, so I, you know, one thing about COVID, I mean, I think it's wonderful in some ways to be at home and to, the community comes together, but things I miss are, I miss teaching people, physically being in the classroom, teaching people yeah. and, and having little chats. So I would meet like Anita, a good friend and other practitioners at little bed and breakfasts or hotels and would sit and would have a coffee chat. And we discussed yeah. that exact topic about when she had yeah. her experience and I had mine about that ribbon effect she it's talking all about that. I miss wow. those sorts of things, a little back. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, Sharon Dia says, is there a secret message of why people suffer anxiety? Is it a lesson unlearned? Kelly? Well, anxiety is often about something that we can't control in the future. It's futurizing an event. It's fear. And so is there a secret message about it? What well, are you? Well, Kelly, is also control in there? That it's they want control. To control. You, you it's fear of the what's going to happen next instead of living in the moment. And the one thing about meditation is it really puts you in the moment, right in the, puts you right in the present moment. If we are in the present moment, we cannot be anxious. It's not possible actually. There's so no, the past is no future. It's just now the power of no. now. It's just yeah. the power of now living in this moment. Yeah. The past has already happened. Right. The future is yet to be. So we well, have right. a moment now. Today, my show, my soul care show this morning, you heard, Someone asked a question about death or afraid of death. I go, yes. Why? I don't understand that. There's anxiety about death. And a lot of people have anxiety about death because they think it's the great unknown. And, and they want to right. control, right? Right. It, it's the great unknown. Absolutely. This is a good question. Sherry Kinnett says, can you, James, explain on the visual mantras like your rose? I seem to resonate more with that one. Sure. Um everyone's different, right? Everybody's different. So I'm more of a visual, if you will. I, I like sound as well, but I'm a very visual person. So for me, the rose, really the rose was, I don't know how I could put it to you, was given to me in Kelly at the Bodhi Tree bookstore when I used to read books on a Saturday. Yeah. Uh, the rose that I would see in my mind's eye when I started meditating. And um, then I would get deeply into the rose, into the petals of the rose, even down to the dew drops in the rose. Mm-hmm. And then I would become, I would shrink myself to be in the middle of that rose just lying there. And that's how I used to work. And I still do that um, when I do meditation. So that's a great way to do things. Um, I just visualize it. I visualize all, a lot of my meditations are visual. Like we bring people to the other side. A lot of my courses with meditations, like bringing heaven home, I yeah. do uh, bring them visually to the other world, to the other realms. So, so I'm a very visual person. Everyone's different. Mm-hmm. So something more affected by sounds. Um, some people more video visions. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see. You know, what about me about Kelly uh, asking for readings? We're not doing readings tonight, yeah. but I am doing a lot more next year. I'm doing um, every yes. month. I'm doing four different nights. I'm doing two nights of mediumship and two nights of psychic work. So everybody, hold out till January, and we'll start with readings then. But tonight, we're, this isn't about readings here. Okay. Cassie says, meditate a white light surrounding you, keeping you protected from anything that does not belong to you. So that's a good one, Cassie. But I, I used to think that too. And then um, a healer, a good, very good healer friend of mine said to me, well, 
the white light is good, but you first have to cleanse that what's within you because white light is going to keep the things from coming to you. But if you have something within you already, some other people's energy or whatever's going on inside, anxiety, trauma, you first need to release that and let that go, get right. to a neutral space and then create that white light. Right. I sense. agree. Paul Katz has a really good thing here. He says, I think people have anxiety about death because it's very difficult to imagine no consciousness whatsoever, no existence, energy going nowhere. It's incomprehensible and scary. So, of course, people who don't believe our energy goes on are going to be terrified by the idea. Absolutely. Very true, Paul. Very, Absolutely. Very true. Yeah. Exactly right. Well said. It's like the same thing, Paul, that people think that, you know, animals or trees, plants have no consciousness. Right. It's, how could they not? You know, it's the yeah. same thing. So, and, and that's where people need to go within themselves and, and just have that connection with their own soul because there's so much within us. You know, we right. see the outside skin is so more inside of us than we know. I mean, yeah. It's so true. Or the it's journey. So and it's a great journey. Self, Self-discovery. Wonderful. So Doree McNulty says, can pranayama breathing and meditation help with weight loss efforts? I don't well, know why not. It seems to me that it would. Renee, yeah. do you have do you have a, something to say about that, Renee? About pranayama uh, breathing? Yeah, um, pranayama is, uh, is incredibly powerful. You can use it for um, a lot of things. But including, well, the most important thing with pranayama, it's kind of the, the goal, if you will, it's kind of the same as with meditation, is creating balance, right? A balance in the mind and in the body and in spirit. Because, um, and, and pranayama can help with that a lot. So usually when there is um, an overweight issue or an overeating or undereating, right? Both, both sides of the pendulum, then it's not in balance. So if you start your pranayama technique every day, it literally balances the right hemisphere with the left hemisphere. And it brings you your body, mind, and spirit in a more balanced situation. So in that sense, it can, yeah, definitely help. And for those who don't know, what is pranayama breathing? Just for those who don't know exactly what that is. Yeah, pranayama is uh, as, um, basically the breathing techniques. And there are, again, hundreds of breathing techniques and some are invigorating. So they really, you know, help you get stronger. And, and but there's also, um, uh, yeah, the other, the other side of things is to calm things down and to calm the nervous system down, to heal. And so there are lots and lots of different techniques that you can do. Um, you know, and many of you probably know that when you breathe very quickly in and out, <laughs> You can see that you rev things up, and when you yeah, yeah. slow exactly, but when you slow down your breath, notice just notice what happens to your body and your mind. It literally the mind follows the breath, so you can. It's very powerful, very old uh, techniques, but it's amazing. You do a lot of different breathing in yoga, a lot of different types, different breathing, different things. It's great. Mm -hmm. Are you going to give us a little meditation, uh, Renee? I, I'm. I think we're just kind of. Like the sure, gym. yeah, definitely. So, yeah, Kelly? no problem. Yeah, be great. Yeah, this okay. So, yeah, so um, oh, <laughs> oh, wow, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's been so fun to um, to be um, with you together on the show and to share Thank a little you. bit of what's that. Oh, um, gosh, totally. It's, so so much fun and um i see all these amazing comments um in the background of course i still keep track of what's going on and so many people are commenting and having amazing questions and it's too bad that the show can be longer because there's so many unanswered questions but it's um it shows that people are really interested so this is great so what i'm going to do now is i'll lead everybody into a um a, a short meditation um a uh, few minutes and we will use the mantra so hum. So hum is a widely known mantra. It means I am so, or I am that. And this mantra, this particular mantra is paired with the breath. So a lot of mantras you can just repeat silently and effortlessly. Um, but this one is paired with the breath, which means that when you inhale, you silently say so. And when you exhale and silently think hum, you show so hum. And actually, when you listen, you can actually listen that your breath is making that sound. It's very, very interesting. And do you inhale through your nose and exhale out of your mouth, or how, how do you, is that how you do the breathing? You, 
Yeah, you can do it either way. You can breathe whatever is eff most effortlessly um, for you at this moment. But I would recommend breathing into the nose and out to the mouth. But if you want to breathe through your nose, that's totally fine. Yes. So, yeah, the most important thing is um, is make yourself comfortable. So for those of you who are watching or in the car or whatever, <laughs> don't get yourself in trouble. So but get in a comfortable position. Okay, and then take a minute or so to really um, calm down. We start with some effortless breathing. You can go ahead and close your eyes. And then we'll start with the breath. And on the inhalation, silently repeat so. And on the exhalation, silently. Repeat hum. So hum. Now it's important for you to find your own rhythm, your own pace. And again, sit comfortably. Start just breathing effortlessly and allow your breathing to be normal and not controlling it in any way. And be aware of the breath, not focusing or concentrating, just simply observing as it naturally flows in and out. And on the inhalation, silently think to yourself, so. And on the exhalation, hum. Let go, relax a little bit more. Let go of any tension in your shoulders, in your back in your stomach area. Give yourself permission to take a few minutes, a few minutes of just being with yourself. When you notice, and inevitably it will, that your mind wanders off to thoughts or to feelings or to sensations, simply bring it back to the mantra. So, um, now resting even deeper. Rest. Relax. Right now, your heart rate slows down. The immune system is boosting. All your cells in your body start to communicate in a better way, effortlessly. Relax. You might find actually now, you might find and or notice a spaciousness inside yourself. An openness. Openness is usually overshadowed by all the doings, the thinkings, the feelings, the actions. But notice that 
there is also an openness and spaciousness now. Inhale, so exhale. Um. Noticing your body quieting down. Trust that right now there is deep healing taking place inside of you. So, um, I am, which means I am connected with everything in the universe. At the core of my being, I am the universe. Rest even deeper. So hum. But the stillness that you are aware of now, that you're noticing now, is always present. This field of infinite possibilities is always present in your life. You are an infinite being. It's only the mind that puts up the limitations and constrictions. At the core of your being, you are totally free. Always. Now, in a moment, when we come out of the meditation, we will, of course, resume our daily lives, everything that we need to do. But every once in a while during the day, remind yourself that you are whole. You are free. You are a spiritual being having a temporary human experience. You are infinitely creative. If you remind yourself a few times during the day, that slowly, surely, this innate wisdom will come back to the surface again. And it will start to serve you very well during your life. You start to feel much more connected with the spiritual side of you. Now you can let go of the mantra, so hum, and just rest. Just sit here for a moment. And then whenever it feels comfortable, you can slowly open your eyes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Renee. Great. Wow. 
Wow. Hmm. A lot of people always say to me, I don't want to come back. And now I understand that. And now I ended right. So right. true. Wow. Everybody is saying thank you. Thank you, Renee. That was really wonderful. Um, thank you, Renee. I, I never get to receive. I was doing them. It's great to receive. It's great. I feel like it's oh, falling for really. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody is saying thank you, Renee. <laughs> that, everybody. Yeah, thank you. And thank I loved how you how you talked about, you know, throughout the day, think of this and the infinite mm -hmm. possibilities. Yeah, it's so hard, right? I mean, we know, and this is what you teach, and at the core of our being, we are spiritual beings. We are free. Our soul is free. And you both say that all the time. And um, for the mind, this is so hard and so difficult to comprehend. So in order to do that, you need to you need tools because we're so caught up in our daily to day um, business that the mind doesn't isn't even aware of our spiritual side anymore most of the time. So you need to come back, you need to come back. And James, that's what you do with all your courses. Every course that you do is a different avenue, a different path to come sure. back to your spiritual side. And it's amazing. Sure. Yeah. You know? so it's so powerful. And Kelly, for you, the same thing. When you do all your readings, people um, are so much helped by it because you remind them of their spiritual yeah. essence that I, I, right i think you're right when it reminds them that they are their souls that they are that's their mm -hmm. inheritance that their spirit that that's what it reminds them it's mm -hmm. not us it's helping them like i always say holding a mirror up to you you know just reflect right. on yourself that's yeah. all we really do right wow that's yeah. so wonderful. wonderful that was just wonderful gosh renee thank you so much thank you, thank you very much thank gosh. you for the opportunity thank you Oh my God, what a spiritual teacher, right? Yeah. And he does that. He's been doing it for years now and has a many wow. support group with uh, Deep Box people for years. Uh, Jeff is in that. So, yeah, hmm. for years. You never know, Renee. He's the quiet ones. You know. He's the quiet one. That's so true. Oh my yeah, gosh. We have a great uh, guest coming up in a few weeks, a few months. We have a, a Clint for grounding, the, like, the number one man about grounding, learning about grounding. From earthing, from earthing.com for grounding. It's going to be incredible. I think that's January 17th yeah, so coming up. Lynn Probert is that, Lynn, I mean, January 3rd, we have Lynn, which yeah. is going to be great. And next week, next we're going week. to be talking about, well, I'm going to write, I've got it right here. Hold on. Okay, you ready? It is end of life, death and death doulas. End of life. Oh my God, that's right. I forgot all about that. We came and up with that. And death doulas. Yes. I came up yesterday in a conversation I had with somebody. Wow. Oh, I have a feeling it'll come up a lot this week. Yes. End of yeah. life doulas. End of life doulas. And it'll 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 be a great show next week. Yeah. And look so forward to that. And you still have so many great classes to take right now, too. Yes. In your school. School's great. Yes. It's Lots wonderful. of great classes here. Oh meeting each other for a lifetime. The lifetime. I've had so many people write me and say, "Wow, I've I've met the same. These people are just the same mindset." So thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. That's so true. Oh well, my thank gosh. You. Thanks, Renee. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, for everybody, and thank you, James. Thank you, Kelly, and we'll see you. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher. James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. The James and Kelly Show.